Two State Department contractors with decades of hands-on experience devoted to protecting our country's most sensitive secrets are speaking out for the very first time to our Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge about Secretary Clinton's tenure. Okay, Mr. Mr. Oyster. Government contractor Dave Witness says he worked within the State Department's Office of Security Technology, which is responsible for cameras, alarms, and sweeping for bugs. He quickly noticed the rules didn't seem to apply to Secretary Clinton and her team. The State Department was a worcester. It was great for the foundation and great for the Clintons to, to be able to have such a great position. What is the primary target of a foreign intelligence service? So number one person would be the, the Secretary of State, uh, their communications, uh, you know, what are their intents, what are their purposes. As Mrs. Clinton was sworn in as secretary in January 2009, government contractor Amos Smith says he was also working at the department. State Department rules are clear. I helped write those rules. Smith says his 30 years of experience includes serving in the U.S. Army's 82nd Airborne before becoming a counterintelligence and counterespionage investigator at state, tracking down breaches of classified materials. I hear things like, well, I forgot, um, I don't know that I was trained, I don't know this. You know, every single person that had access to that information when it was sent is in violation. Smith reviewed some of the FBI witness interviews known as 302s with Fox. They show secure facilities for classified information known as SCIFs were specially built for Secretary Clinton in her Washington, D.C. and Chappaqua, New York homes. Doors that were supposed to be locked were left open. You know, if you've got an uncleared uh, person in there, it's, it's, it's automatically a compromise. It says that there were personally owned desktop computers in the secure facilities at Secretary Clinton's homes, yet she told the FBI that she did not have a computer of any kind mm -hmm. in these facilities. If somebody said they're there, then they probably were there, and, and you know the reason you would deny it was because you probably didn't have approval. Witness team handled requests for Mrs. Clinton's devices. It was unfathomable that it would be used for anything other than just unclassified communication. So you had no idea that there was sensitive information on this BlackBerry, and she wanted to use it for all information. Correct. We just thought it was for her unclassified use. But more than 2,100 emails with classified information, another 22 at the top secret level, passed through Clinton's unsecured private server. What do you think happened at the State Department? Personally, um, there had to have been somebody moving classified information from CLAN. CLAN, again, is secret, confidential only, and JWIX. JWIX is where all top secret information is. After new emails were found in the Anthony Weiner sexting case belonging to his estranged wife, Clinton aide Huma Abedin, the FBI reopened the Clinton email investigation. We do know that his estranged wife's emails are on that computer. Whether it's the private email server, whether it's uh, this private laptop, you know, if there's classified, one document on there that's classified, it's a violation. Somebody violated the law. Throw all the politics out the window. What we're talking about is the defense of this nation. Asked about Smith and Witna, the State Department emphasized the head of diplomatic security told the FBI Secretary Clinton was, quote, very responsive to security issues. In Washington, Catherine Herridge, Fox News. To Cleveland, where rapper Jay-Z, now he is a self-admitted former drug dealer. He raps about misogyny and violence. He, along with his wife, Beyonce, headlined a free concert for Hillary Clinton last night, as you can see. Now, watch this. We have a woman who is an inspiration to so many others. I thank her. I thank Beyonce for standing up and showing the world. We are strongest when we look out for each other. And I thank Jay for addressing in his music some of our biggest challenges in the country. Poverty, racism, the urgent need for criminal justice reform. Addressing in his music, uh, misogyny. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure how well Hillary's appearance actually went over. I'm going to bring you this from the New York Times. Note the source, the New York Times. Quote, <laughs> when she took the stage and began making the case for her candidacy, dozens of people began leaving the arena. Well, 
there were thousands of people in the arena. So I'm, I'm going to take that with a pinch of salt. Yeah. <laughs> right, from the Cleveland Police Department, Detective Steve Loomis is with us. Detective, I am told that Hillary refused to hold a meeting with the Cleveland Police. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. That's, that's accurate. Not, not recently, not with this appearance, but um, in previous uh, appearances, yes, sir. Okay, so did you ask her to come and meet you guys in the Cleveland Police Department? Is that how it worked? Yeah, that, that is exactly how it works. When we're, doing, uh, uh, when we're vetting candidates and, and deciding who we're going to endorse and support uh, in these types of elections, mm -hmm. um, we always reach out to both sides of the aisle and try to figure out who the best candidate's going to be. Now, the relationship between the police force and the, and the community of Cleveland is obviously very much in the news. Do you have any reason why Hillary Clinton refused to meet the Cleveland police force? Well, probably for the same reasons that she refused to meet with the national FOP. Um, I would be very concerned as a law-abiding citizen of the motives of anybody uh, that refuses or does not want to meet with law enforcement, of all people, or of all groups, but surrounds herself with uh, rap artists and people that have made a very good living uh, uh, talking about and singing about and rapping about uh, the thug life. Out well, there in violence against police. So. I mean, I guess, look, I, I, I can see her point. She wants to rally people in Ohio. It's sure. a very big deal. So you bring on a popular music artist and his wife because you want to appeal to that group and you want to appeal to young people. You want mm -hmm. votes in the state of Ohio. I mean, sure. would you excuse her on those grounds? You okay with this? Uh, well, you know, the only reason that she had so many people at that concert is because they gave out, you know, 2,500 extra free tickets there. Um, you know, mm. so it's, it's politics is normal. Um, it, it's, it's appalling to me that, again, you know, she's not reaching out trying to bring people together um, like Donald Trump is, and, and certainly in the case of law enforcement. So um, I, I, it's just more politics as usual. If people want the status quo, if pe you said it earlier, if people want things to continue the way that they are, then Hillary Clinton is your candidate. You know, absolutely Hillary Cl Clinton is going to be your candidate. Um, if you want somebody that's going to try to unite us, somebody that's going to support law enforcement, somebody that's going to support law and order in this country. I, I just left a, a, a crime scene last week. A four-year-old beautiful little baby girl got shot in the face. Her Hello. sister, nine years old, got shot in the back because two black male thugs, uh, probably Jay-Z uh, fans, thought it was a good idea to shoot up the house. You know who I didn't see there? I didn't see Black Lives Matter there, uh, who supports Clinton. I didn't see uh, the NAACP there. I didn't see any of our local politicians that support Clinton there. Um, I saw a bunch of police officers, male, female, black, white police officers, some angry, some very, very upset mm. at, at witnessing this tragedy. And every single one of them wanted to go out and find the bad guys that, that changed this little four-year-old girl's life forever. Um, that's what I saw, and that's what we do in this country, we law do. enforcement, and for her to not want to talk to us or meet with us and blame us for generations and decades of social decay and problems that are brought, brought here by the Democratic Party, at well, least here in Cleveland, um, it's appalling. You've got a strong point of view there, Steve Loomis, and we thank, thank you, very you very much, much for being on the show on a Saturday morning of all times. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me, sir. Corey Lewandowski served as Trump campaign manager just before Paul Manafort and is currently an advisor to the Trump super PAC. Corey, good to see you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Happy Halloween. And to you, how well do you know George Papadopoulos? You know, from what I recall, George was a low-level volunteer who might have attended uh, a meeting of the foreign policy advisory team, the one meeting that took place. Uh, but he was not a person who was involved with the day-to-day -day operations of the campaign or a person who I recall interacting with uh, on a regular basis at all. Corey, were you aware or was anyone in the White House aware that he had actually been arrested as part of this investigation back in July? Have you had any interaction or has anyone in the inner circle had interaction with him in the time since July? You know, I can't speak for the people in the White House of what they may or may not be aware of, but I can say unequivocally on behalf of myself, uh, I've had no interaction with George uh, from that uh, time where he was arrested or, or since I left the campaign that I can recall in June, 
of 2016 and uh, have not had any interaction. And I was not aware of his arrest other than what was reported yesterday. Now, knowing that he was arrested and is now cooperating with the special counsel, if he was in contact with anyone in the inner circle through phone calls or emails or visits to the White House, do you imagine there are some people in the White House this morning waking up with dry mouths? Well, look, I, I can say this. You know, I know a number of the people in the White House. I had the privilege of working with them on the campaign. And George was never a person who was part of the team that was interacting with the uh, senior management on a regular basis. And look, if George did, in fact, lie to the FBI and he's been arrested for those lies, then he should be accountable for that, which anybody should be. Cool. So I don't think there's any concern in the White House about his uh, any potential contact that he may or may not have had. Corey, let's see if we can clear up a few things from the indictment, which I'm sure you have read. Are you the, quote, high ranking campaign official who received three or four emails from George Papadopoulos during this April, May, June time period during the campaign? You know, it's a great question, Savannah, and I don't know the answer to it because, as you know, as the campaign manager to the Trump campaign, I was receiving thousands of emails a day. I don't know if, that's, uh, if that was re specifically referring to me or was that Paul Manafort or was that Rick Gates or somebody else? So you don't you recognize know, don't those like emails. Some of the emails have quotes. For example, one of the emails states that the campaign official, which may or may not be you, forwarded an email and said, you're running point on this. Did you send an email like that? Yeah, I, I, Savannah, look, I, I don't recall that specific email, but you're asking me to remember an email from April of 2016 on a day that I, at any given day, would have received a thousand emails and this would have potentially come from a low-level volunteer. So I don't remember the exact email. So I don't know if I'm that person cool. or not. And I can't, I can't speak to who, who, is that, who is named in that particular incident. At any time, Corey, did George Papadopoulos tell you either verbally or in an email that Russian officials had told him that they had dirt on Hillary Clinton, specifically thousands of her emails? Do you ever receive, remember receiving that message from George Papadopoulos? I don't remember that. And the reason would be is because George was such a low level volunteer. I don't recall having much interaction with him throughout the campaign. He would have uh, potentially been talking to somebody else in the campaign. But as the campaign manager, particularly at that time when we were in the middle of an intense primary fight with Ted Cruz and John Kasich, you know, my day to day operation was not interacting with a low level volunteer. Well, let me just see if we can clarify this. Were you aware that the Russians had hacked the DNC computers and emails before the news broke? Did you get that information from someone before April of that year? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, the abs absolutely not. When I found out about that, I found out about it through public press reports. Corey, has the FBI asked to interview you? Have you been interviewed by the FBI? No, look, I, I, let me be very clear. I'll be more than happy to cooperate with any potential ongoing investigation. I have not spoken to anybody from the FBI, but I will be as clear as I can be. I will cooperate with any investigation because I am 100 percent certain that all of my interactions at the campaign were above board and legal, and I have nothing to hide. So if they ask me to participate, I'll be happy to do that unequivocally. All right. Corey Lewandowski, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, your time.